Anyways, so there's something wrong with my computer. I don't know what it is. I might just have to chuck it out and buy an expensive laptop. I don't know because my computer is crashing on me every day now. It just shuts down on me, so I don't know what to do, right? So it's fine though. My computer. I guess until it completely shuts down, then I will, you know, <laughs> try to figure out what to do. But for now, I'm gonna go and we're gonna continue on with the news. So what we just did was, okay, let's just for the record, it's July 24th, 2024. <laughs> so for the record, right? I want to show you my child replacement. Who wants to see my replacement child? Because uh, the other Jew hater, Elf, Adam Elf, he always tells me, whenever I show my animals, he always says, oh, that's your child replacement. So, okay, fine. It's my child replacement. If that's what you want to think. Good for you. Think that. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> so, they're my children. And I don't have human children so what okay fine they're my you want them to be my child replacement fine whatever so continuing on with the news right the news of today so we have to read news disturbing news important news not important news okay so now let's see what else is happening jump blatt roasted by drew's leap spiritual leader in israel Who's that? Who's Jumblat? <laughs> Once you manage to solve the internal problems in Lebanon, only then we can, we'll talk about the ways to help Palestinian brothers, said Tarif. Okay, so the Druze, the Druze are like Muslim mixture of faiths, and they're not considered Muslim by other regular Muslims, and the Druzim, they basically fight in Israeli wars, they are loyal to the state of Israel, and they are considered important people here. So. Right? The spiritual leader of the Druze in Israel, Sheikh Muf Wafak Tarif, demanded Druze political leader in Lebanon, Walid Jumblat, to stop his fluctuating and acting in order to please certain actors. He subtly hinting at Hezbollah. This was in response to a letter sent by Jumblat earlier this week following rumors on Arabic speaking social media regarding an alleged extensive role of Druze prison guards in running. Israeli prisons and dealing with Palestinian detainees and indict, indicted terrorists. Following, followed by threats, despite the fact that prisons in Israel are made up of both Jews and Jewish wardens. So the Jewism, they are also the people in Israel who are in the police force, they're in the IDF, and now they're also, they are also the prison wardens, right? Alongside Israelis and Jews. John Blatt opened his letter out of concern for the history, affiliation, identity, and sacrifices of the Druze over the years, stressing the three main points. In his first note, John Blatt rejects the meeting held between Tariff and Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, quoting ongoing aggression against... Okay, so this guy, John Blatt, he is basically against Israel, right? So, what does he say, right? The second note regarded Tariff... He sent two notes, and he said about the Druze guy, who's like pro-Israel, that expressing concern that the latter did not con condemning enough the aggression against the Palestinian people, innocent civilians and prisoners. Right, they're so innocent. They we have literally these Muslims who are in jail, like these Palestinians. They are caught on video stabbing Jewish people, trying to kill Jews. Right, so these are the people in <laughs> our prisons. Right so innocent right we have them on video doing the worst possible things so whoever's in israeli's jails usually deserves to be there besides for the what we've called the uh settlers of samaria who go to jail because they usually defend themselves against monsters whatever stars um finally Jumblatt implies cowardice on the sheikh's part wondering why this fear of hesitation in taking a position opposing what that's now government is doing blah 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 so tarif responds saying we don't fluctuate we are steadfast in our support for jews the jewish state of israel 
In his response, Tariff subtly criticized John Blatt for publishing the letter on social media, adding that he wished their communication would remain on a personal level. Right, so lowlives usually go to social media to air their dirty laundry, while this guy is, this this Drew's leader, Tariff, he's of higher caliber. He has integrity. He has res self-respect, right? So he's telling this guy, let's be personal, right? So... He said, let's remain, our letters remain on a personal level, as it has been to this day, so that we would remain honest in our intentions and precise in expressing them for the benefit of the Druze sect and not to please our, any party, subtly hinting at Hezbollah. All right, so this guy, it looks like there's, like, fighting going on. Tarif added that the Druze in Israel are citizens of a democratic state and respect its laws. He further hoped that John Blatt would respect the views of Israeli Druze, just as Druze in Israel respect his. It's funny because I, I actually had a conversation with the Druze, com someone from the Druze community, and he's like so Islamic, right? He believes in the whole thing. And he completely rejects the idea that he's not Muslim and he shouldn't be considered part of the Muslim community. And I tried to explain to him that, hey, the Muslims all around the world, like a billion of them, think that you are an outcast. You're not really Muslim. So. You might as well just reject Islam altogether because Islam is not a good religion at all, right? So let's read the comments of this, shall we? Let's go read the comments. The Druze of Israel are a beautiful and honest group. Once this war is finished, Israel must find ways to honor and equalize the status of this group that fought and died in the battle against the evil of October 7th. The Druze are worthy of every measure and benefit of Israeli citizenship. I wish the Druze of Israel only prosperity and joy. Amen. Any effort should be made to grant full equalization for Druze in Israel as long as they remain faithful citizens to Israel. Besides being the right thing to do, in the very long run, it will help to gain the confidence of Muslims that it is unavoidable, unavoidable that they will be our neighbors forever, whether we and them like it or not, right? So, but the, the difference between the Druze and the regular Muslims in Israel, right, is that the Israeli Arabs, the Israeli Arabs don't serve in the military here in Israel, but the Druze are their own thing. They're their own community. They're a different sect of Islam, and they actually serve in the idea, you know? Like, they are good people. The Druze walked with Israel for more than 100 years, and they must get the same privileges. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. that's with the Druze community, and they're not, they're not the same as the Israeli Arabs. The Israeli Arabs are... Uh, hi Jackson, how are you? <laughs> Been a while. What's your opinion on Yemen going to war with Israel? They're stupid. <laughs> They're fools because they have like a problem with their starving population and instead of going and focusing on like feeding their citizens to stop them from dying, they basically are focusing on killing Jews in another country, which makes no sense, right? In fact, there's zero Jews now because the last Yemeni Jew died like two months ago or something, right? Yeah, stars. Judaism is a death cult, really. Maybe you need to go read a little bit more and meet some more Jews to understand who the real death cult is because the real death cult is the Muslims. They worship death and they worship martyrdom. So you should go and do your little research before you come and make a fool of yourself, stars. Yeah, just been busy, busy recently. I'm glad you're busy. Keep busy, you know? It's the best thing for you to do is keep busy. I believe in being busy. Right? <sighs> Nancy now who prepares statesman-like speech from Congress alleviates Biden administration. Okay, so... Okay, the Haredim are being drafted into the military. The Haredim are the ultra-Orthodox, right? Um, we must boost the resilient Israeli industry in border regions. Right, so, in fact, someone like uh, Stars, right, that says Judaism is a death cult is such a fool for saying that because every time we celebrate, we lift our cup, we say l'chaim, which means to life, right? We cherish life. We preserve life. The Muslims, they love death. They are a death cult. So... You should get your facts straight before you come on here and look like an idiot. Because even the Jew haters, even the Jew haters admit that the Jews love life. And they say, oh, Jews are weak. Why? Because they love life. And the Muslims love death. They're not afraid to die. Why? Because they worship death. Right? 
stars. I don't know where you've read your shit, but that's not what it says in the Talmud. But even if such a thing were to be said in the Talmud, it's not what you think it is. But of course, it's not written in the Talmud that non-Jews need to be killed. But you're just a fool because you believe everything you read. And I'm here to tell you that instead of just reading all the non-Jewish propaganda, the Nazi propaganda, you should go and do deep search research into these belief systems that you're buying into before you form an opinion because you really look stupid. Do you know what I'm saying? And I actually did a videos on the Bolshevik Revolution and you can watch my other videos on the life of Trotsky and the life of Stalin. In my videos, I will put it here for you so that you basically... I oh here's my tarot channel. Don't do, don't you do tarot readings anymore? Don't I do tarot readings anymore? I just fell in love with you. This all makes sense. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay, so so people are appreciating my tarot channel, all right? So um, where was I? <laughs> where was I? This fool, right? This fool. You do look stupid. You really look dumb, right? I did on my... I came here to do the Bolshevik... I'll show you my... Or I don't need... I can just do Schmerchik, Bolshevik. Schmerchik, Trotsky. Okay, Trotsky. You can read... Here's my videos on the Bolshevik... Let's talk about Leon Trotsky. It talks about the Bolshevik Revolution, right? And... Besides for my farts, Right? I talk about this stuff. Go look through my channel for the Bolshevik Revolution, anything regarding the Russians, and you'll get insight into the Bolshevik Revolution, which was really uh, a mixture of Jews and non-Jews who took part in the revolution. So you look really stupid. You're like, you're reminding me of Candace Owens, who believes in that the world is flat, right? That's what you're looking like right now. So... You know, just get with it. All right. Anyway, Yemen's Houthi rebels vow open battle with Israel and U.S. as fears rise in the Middle East war. Anyway, like the Russians themselves, they don't want, they don't want you to think that it was the Russian Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution, was run by Jews because they also want credit for it. You know, like. You're taking away all the credit from the non-Jewish population, you know, like, literally. Which is really sad, because Jews only made up, like, 4% of Russian population or less, maybe 1% of Russian population back in 1895, in the 1890s. So, you know, you're not looking very smart. There was a huge amount of peasantry that were part of the revolution, and... In fact, after the Tsar Russia was overthrown, the Bolshevik Revolution, the Bolsheviks, right, they got a hold of the power, and then there was a civil war after the Tsar was overthrown. There was a civil war be between the Bolsheviks and anarchists and people who were socialists and communists with different ideas and that were rebelling against the Bolsheviks, and there was a huge civil war and who were not Jewish, right? The civil war was... Re it was a rebellion by a bunch of mixture of people, such as pirates, such as people who are capitalist, mixture with socialists and communists. So it was a huge um, joint effort by the Russian non-Jewish population. So to say, to, to put all the credit on the Jews, it's just unfair to the rest of the Russian population who's actually very proud in their participation in the Russian Revolution. So, you know, it's just not fair. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what Putin says. People can say lots of things, but historians, lots of historians, there's books have been written about it, and it's complex history. It's not, and it's not just, oh, they did this. It is, it's very, hi, Sergeant Vaka, how are you? It's very complicated. History is complicated. It's not just like, oh, they did this, they did this. No. There's a lot of details and complexities that come with history. Do you understand? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I can be a, I can be a, 
authority on this because my grandparents were communists, some of them. <laughs> One side of my grandparents was communist. My father's paternal side was capitalist. My father's mother's side, maternal side, was cap was communist. In fact, my grandfather's cousin was Lenin's bodyguard. Okay? So, yeah. Vladimir Lenin's bodyguard. Was his name Vladimir? Lenin's bodyguard. My grandfather's cousin, first cousin, was Lenin's bodyguard. So, I know more about this than you know. Okay? Anyway, yeah, it's very complicated. It's not just like whatever Candace Owen says. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's an idiot. Yeah, we're like as if there's Jews in China, right? Like, yeah, sure. Sure, right? Why don't you just go to, go to Candace Owen's channel? There's tons of people like you there. You can all be an echo chamber there, and you can all like just spew your Jew hatred there. Just go there. That's the place for you. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So it's like people like you that come and they just like put comment quotes and then they just put any rabbi's name, you know, trying to make as if, you know, it's factual, you know. You're nothing factual. You don't know anything about history, right? I did a whole video on communism and the reason for communism and how it all happened and about Rasputin, who you know nothing about, and about Tsar Nicholas, and all the details that come with what happened in the revolution. And I'd go as far as to say that Tsar Nicholas deserved to be ousted out of his position because of his bad treatment towards the Jews, right? So it's a very complicated, uh, history's complicated, right? Hmm. When J-words say they created communism, it's a great thing, but when I say it, it's hateful. You don't have good intentions, you know. You come on my channel and start, like, quote, throwing out quotations which are false. Start, like, blaming Jews for different things and making uh, statements which are non-factual, which are lies. It's defamation, you know. And you have no I idea about history altogether, you know what I'm saying? So, if you go watch my videos from the past about the Bolshevik Revolution, when I speak about the Tsar, and I speak about Rasputin, and I speak about Trotsky, and Lenin, and Stalin, then you'll get a little idea about history. But you're very simplet you're a simpleton. You don't have any intelligence, you know? So you don't want to learn. You just want to say, oh, the Jews did this, the Jews did that. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. I'm going to you Yeah, I guess you're very passionate. Very passionate. I'm like fired up. Oh, God. Right? <sighs> the Forward wrote an article, a Jew in Ma oh, China. They bring about it. They brag about it. Yeah, whatever. So what? There's no Jews in China. And there's no Jews in North Korea. And look at it. There's no Jews in China. And there's no Jews in North Korea. And look at those two places. It's a horror show. Right? Wherever there's Jews, it's good. Right? In America, there are Jews. It's flourishing. America, there is, in Israel, there's Jews. It's flourishing. Nazi Germany fell because they expelled their Jews and they killed their Jews. And that's why Nazism fell. They lost the wars. And they, in fact, they also lost land, right? There's Chabad synagogues in China. There's no real Jewish community there. So the only people that are there are from where I come from, which is Chabad, because Uferatsta. It means to spread light, spread love, spread light, and to overcome barriers. So China's, China, Chinese communist government, they're communist, right? So we believe in breaking barriers. So the, the Chabad goes and breaks the barriers and goes into China, and they spread light and love, and they spread the seven laws of Noah. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. This is my... This is my... This is my child replacement, like Elf likes to say, right, Sargon? <laughs> spread light, spread love, let it all around the world. Spread light, spread love. You want to see a song, a Jewish song? Yeah? All around the world. Spread love, spread light, spread light, all around the world. 
He's my child replacement, right? Okay. <laughs> and there's no real Jew there's no real community. There's no real Jewish community in China. So there's no real Jewish community. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there's no real uh, thriving Jewish community. There is a Chabad center, yes, but there is no real Jewish community there, which is like people living there as Jewish people with like many, many families. It's not like that there. Right? So um where was I? I wanted to show you what did I want to show you? I want to show you about the what you say, right? What do you say? You say Okay, delete this. Delete Biden. You say, right? I want to show you the song of, of Spread Light, Spread Love. Hold on. I shouldn't have deleted it. Okay, let me show you. Is she your child replacement? <laughs> Lying to your native language like the Bible says. This guy has problems, as you can see. Stars are so hateful. You know, he he's just so hateful. He's got problems. <laughs> okay, let's go. Spread light. Last is Yahoo. Okay, I'm going to show you. Hold on. We'll play it for you because just the song because it's very important for you to know. It's important. You need to learn to love and spread light. This is what we believe in Chabad, right? We believe in spreading light and love. That's why they, we believe in also breaking boundaries. So like going to places which are uninhabitable. Like we came to Israel we broke boundaries. It was, for any normal person, the boundary would be like, oh, don't come to Israel, there's malaria, right? In 1900. And the Muslims didn't want to live here. They wanted to sell their property to the Jews, right? So, no, let's go to... Okay, so this is very important for you to watch. Okay. Continuing, right? Is she your child replacement? What's my only pants? I don't remember. What's my only pants? Only pants? I have only pants. Use it for tarot. <laughs> okay. Let's go and. This is the, the Chabad movement of the Jewish, the Jewish section, the Jewish sect of Chabad, where they believe, because of the, the great Lubavitcher Rebbe, the teacher of the Chabad movement, the leader of the Chabad movement, he sent his followers all over the world. He sent them to China, he sent them to everywhere to run communities, to teach Torah, to teach to Mumbai, India. He sent rabbis there to teach the seven laws of Noah to the non-Jews and to teach the Jewish people about the Torah, right? And to bring kosher food to them. Right. Spreading light. So we, Uferatza, we spread out, spread light. We went to all the countries. That's why we are in China. Exactly. You got it, stars. Stars got it. Yeah, mother. 
See, this, this is the great rabbi, the great leader of the Chabad movement, right? And he taught, he sent all his followers all around the world, including to China. China! Yeah. Oh, There's a rocket flying in. That's what I got, a notification. Yeah, so I'm very inspired, my friends. <laughs> I, I got myself all inspired. Yeah. I got myself all inspired. It's a good song, right? I hope YouTube doesn't ban me and block me like they did to my other video, right? So, anyway. <laughs> so, for you, stars, Jew hater, we are here to break boundaries, to spread light and spread love, and we're, we're here to invade, invade you. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, back to the news. Yes. Okay. We must boost the resilient Israeli industry in border regions. Yeah, so the reason why we don't have weapons is because we stopped the weapons from... The Israeli government stupidly decided to stop their weapon um, production, like their weapon factories, and they decided to rely on America. I think it was a deal made between America and Israel, and the problem is now that now that we made the stupid deal back in the 70s, right? Now we are basically reliant on America for weapons, for our wars, and this is why we have problems fighting our wars. And winning because of America, right? We should never have stopped our independent production of weapons, right? Because now we're, we have to beg America on our knees for our survival, right? So, sympathy to deep admiration, Palestinians daily love Hamas. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. Must activate internet service in Gaza Hospital with help of UAE, Israel. Really? Why would he do that? <laughs> Why would he do that? Yemen, Houthis, rebels, rebels vow open battle with Israel and the U.S. Right. Of course, that's what we're dealing with. Let me go back. Let's see what this is. Boy, my daughter, you know Angelina Jolie, the most beautiful woman in the world, right? You know the most beautiful woman in the world. 
Angelina Jolie, right? So she is disappointing her father every day, you know? It's really sad. She's like a rabid Jew hater. And her father is the opposite. He loves Jews, loves us, love. <laughs> okay, my daughter Angelina Jolie was influenced by anti-Semitic people regarding Gaza. John Boyd criticized daughter Angelina Jolie over Israel-Palestine conflict, highlighting his strong support for Israel and contrasting political views. <laughs> John Boyd, the 85-year-old Oscar-winning actor known for his outspoken support of Donald Trump, made headlines on Tuesday for his public disagreements with his daughter, actress Angelina Jolie, over the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. She has been exposed to propaganda, Boyd told Variety. She's been influenced by anti-Semitic people. Angie has a connection to the UN, and she's enjoyed speaking out for refugees, but these people are not refugees. I love my daughter. I don't want to fight with my daughter. But the fact is, I think she has been influenced by the UN from the beginning. It's been awful with human rights. They call human rights. They call it human rights, but it's just anti-Israel bashing. He said, "Exactly. He's a he's a righteous among the nations, you know. Boyd, who has a six-decade de career in Hollywood with iconic roles in films such as Midnight Cowboy, Coming Home, and Deliverance, remains a controversial figure due to his right-wing political views. He's an ardent supporter of Israel and is a recent its recent actions against Hamas contrasting sharply with Jolie's advocacy for Palestinian refugees. So basically." She's only really a celebrity due to his celebrity status, you know? Like, the only reason why she has any standing in Hollywood is, okay, she's a very beautiful woman, but there are many beautiful women in the world that don't make it in Hollywood, but she did due to him, to her father, right? Boy's relationship with his daughter has been strained over very their differing political views. Despite their reconciliation, the actor continues to publicly challenge Julie's position on the conflict. Variety feature highlights Boyd's unique lifestyle, his passion for acting, and his unwavering political beliefs. Despite Hollywood's general left-leaning stance, because, you know, Hollywood today is Jew-hating, Boyd remains active in the industry. Recently starring in Francis Ford Coppola's dystopian film Megalopolis, Boyd's portrayal of Cass of Crassus, a wine-addled emperor, has been met with mixed views, yet his dedication to his craft remains undisputed. In a reflective moment, Voigt shared his deep connection to the Jewish community, rooted in his upbringing in Yonkers. His father's work at a predominantly Jewish country club shaped Voigt's understanding and empathy towards Jewish culture and struggles. Wow, I didn't know that. So his father liked Jews. This background, he believes, significantly influenced his staunch support of Israel. Boyd has often expressed his admiration for Jewish contribution to the world, citing their resilience and moral values as key influences on his life. He has visited Israel numerous times, showing support for settlements in the West Bank and engaging with local communities. He is a hero! Okay, let's see what they say in the comments, right? The comments are always interesting. I've heard Voigt, Mr. Voigt speak on various talk shows over the years. He's worth the time to listen to. One of the very few enlightened voices remaining in the wilderness that is woke American today. Mr. Boyd is a great human being, an excellent actor. Thank you. Thank you. Boyd has truly been a friend to us, not just now, but his entire life. He is what I call a fellow traveler with the Jews. Not a Jew himself, but with Jewish colleagues and friends, and with a sympathetic understanding. I am truly glad he travels with us. Larry M. Goldstein. Yeah, so, basically, I have to show you videos of him endorsing the Chabad movement, the Jewish people. He stands with the Jewish people. He is such an inspiration to the entire world and to the Jews. I've watched very young John Voigt in the Odessa file years and years ago. I was moved, very moved. I believe Voigt was moved too into becoming a champion for Israel. What's the Odessa file? <laughs> Let's go look at that. Oh, you see? This is what we this is how we learn, friends. This is how we learn. Ufa Rasta Yama Vayama Vayama Okay, I watched a very young John Voight in the Odessa Files years and years ago. I was moved, very moved. I believe Voight was moved in too into becoming a champion for Israel. He is fearsome ostracized and shunned by Hollywood, perhaps even losing his daughter's love for her support of Israel. He has not faltered and remains steadfast. A hero, a signpost, a guide for us all. Good versus bad, right versus wrong. Amen. 
Voight is controversial in America and the West because of his vocal support of Israel. Just think about that for a moment. It's actually more controversial than supporting Hamas. And guess who doesn't support Israel? The Democratic Party. It's, it's one reason Biden has been forced out of the election and the reason party elites have chosen Harris. This would, should worry Israel. John Voight is courageous for speaking the truth. He's an amazing actor, unlike his daughter who can barely act. Exactly. <laughs> Angelina, more famous for her thick lips, tattoos, outfits, sex preferences, many adopted children, divorces, and her acting. <laughs> She's only an actress because her father's an actor, right? Come on, we all know it, right? Besides for her beauty, she's very beautiful. This latest mass movement of kill the Jews is another sign, sure sign of the demise of Western civilization as we've known it, yeah. Okay, so... um. Now we will go and look for him where he goes and speaks about Jews. Let's go see his, right? <clears throat> Let's go speak. Hmm. John Voigt. Voigt on the Jews. On the Jews. Okay. Let's give me a minute and we will... See what he has to say. Shall we? Give me a minute and we will see what he has to say. Shall we? Ufaratsta Yama Vakaid Matsefoina Vava Paneg Bafaratsta Yama Vakaid Matsefoina Vanek Ba Ufaratsta Spread out, spread out, spread light, spread love all around the world. Spread out, spread light, spread love all around the world. Spread out, spread light, spread love all around the world. I'm very disappointed in my daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah,
when John Boyd was moved to tears? He was moved to tears? Let's see that. I have to see where he was moved to tears. John Voigt moved to tears. <gasps> oh, John Voigt moved to tears. I have a program for you, friends. Hang in there. Okay, let's do this. Any updates on bachelors? Mm -mm. I was just having a discussion with my sister and on how upset I am about my last bout with bachelors. Ufaratsta yama va yama yama yama. Yes, Sagar Vaka. Ufaratsta yama va kedma. So the real song is Ufaratsta, 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 Ufaratsta yama va kedma. So find a banegwa. Ufaratsta, Ufaratsta. It means. I'm not sure what it means. I can show you. Ufaratsta means. Ufaratsta yama va kedma. Ufaratsta yama va kedma. Meaning? Means. You shall spread out towards the sea, west, east, and the north, and the south. So it's spreading out to the west, the north, the east, and the south. It's spreading out everywhere and basically taking over. Not taking over, I'm joking. <laughs> but like spreading late, right? Okay, very good. <laughs> so that's the song. Okay, now let's go. Let's see, John Voigt. Okay, so John Voigt says he's a friend of Chabad. Now, we've talked a lot about travel today, and for many, Jewish or not, international Chabad centers offer a perfect place for a rest stop when touring around the world. Her Chabad Jews. houses also offer popular lectures, classes, workshops, and more, all in line within the teachings of 18th century Jewish leader Baal Shem Tov. But now the movement is getting a spotlight like never before with the help of Hollywood producer Stephen Paul and Hollywood actor John Voigt. So joining me now with the details, I'm very excited to introduce Academy and Golden Globe Award winning actor John Voigt. John, thank you so much for being with us. It's a pleasure to have you. It's my pleasure to be with you. All right, now first off, you and your partner Steve Paul, you're working on a new show that will be broadcast on JLTV. What can you tell me about it? Well, it's a... Uh, you know the word for bringing? You know what it is? It's a gathering where people, uh, you know, uh, with people of a spiritual background, let's say, get together and they share their thoughts and inspirations and whatever uh, with each other and, and, uh, and, and a lot of humor and sometimes laughing, and sometimes uh, dancing. Yeah. And this, and, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> sometimes laughing and, and dancing. Anyway, if you, you know the Chabad, from your introduction, I can tell you know who they are. They're fantastic people. And they always have, uh, you know, a way to help other people, regardless of race or creed. And uh, and and whenever you're with them, you're having a good time. They, exactly. they have a smile on their faces, and they uh, and they yeah. th this this idea of life, you know, to life la to life la chayim, seems to be uh, a good Fine. description exactly. of, of uh, their Stars. energy and personality. They have tremendous so energy, and and. Uh, they have a, a great depth of understanding of the wisdom of Judaism. So, is, so when you so, so in this program, you're always going to get something. Well, so I was going to say, so in this program, Friends of Chabad, you're you're doing this, you're sitting down, and you're discussing all these topics. Yes, there are four people in the show, just like you guys have a you line up sometimes. These are the four, and uh, uh, and <laughs> it, it, the humor you can see this humor. <laughs> a kind of joy and humor in it no. and that's what the show brings but also as i say quite a lot of wisdom so we say have fun and be inspired enjoy the fr and, and join the friends of Habat. Wow. that's right so i have to ask you know how did you get into this and and yes as you mentioned that poster it gives off this almost sitcom -y vibe but you know <clears> I'm, I'm glad to see that it's not scripted i think that'll be really interesting but but again well, you know, how did you, you get into this you'll see it's it's quite uh, it's um 
it's really something. The chemistry between the four of us is uh, is very special. The reason why this show happened was because my partner said, we got to do a show on JLTV. we got to do something that's, you know, stimulating to the Jewish people and helpful. And I said, why don't we do something on the Chabad? What a great organization. Let's just find out where they get all this wonderful energy. Rabbi Kuhnen. You know, and, uh, and wisdom. Well, and I so we did. And, and I said, you've got to meet these eat. two fellas, <clears throat> I'm and Levy, because they're a lot. How do I stay skinny? I just don't eat anything, literally. Like... You see what I'm eating? Cucumbers. Basically, I eat. What did I eat today? I ate eggs with some vegetables. I had a salad and then I had some a bread sandwich. And now I'm eating the cucumber. That's how I'm so skinny. Don't let anyone fool you. <clears throat> a lot of fun. And, uh, uh, <coughs> and, and you'll enjoy them. And, and surely, when I introduced uh, Stephen to <clears throat> these two, fellas to Hyman Levy, he got along so beautifully with them. And and Stephen <coughs> fills in the show because he asks all this, the questions almost like a, 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 the little the children in uh, Passover when they ask the questions, the four questions. He asks those obvious questions and he gets all these wonderful responses from the rabbis. Wow. All right. Well, I, I hate to I hate to end it here, but do you have a, maybe a special holiday Two message eggs. for all the viewers at home? We're just ahead of Yom Kippur. Uh, and, and for anybody who's supporting Chabad, it's yes, she three eggs. Well, no, no. I, I can say that that Chabad does so Listen, much good work that it, I'd like to eat more. I'd like to eat like fish, and I'd like to eat. I have fish. I'm just too lazy to eat. I'm too lazy. I don't like to eat. You know, but it's important to eat. You have to eat. And they depend on support from you know. They're out there without a net in a way, and uh, so anything you do for Shabbat, for Chabad really translates to helping a lot of other people, so. That's actually true. But, <clears throat> anyone who's very fat, don't listen to them. <clears throat> if they say, I don't eat anything, they're liars. <clears throat> if they say, I don't eat anything, they're lying. <laughs> they're not being truthful. Because, either they're on medication that whatever they eat metastasize, or... The reason they're fat is because they eat a lot of like fatty foods. So I would say help them, but uh, also, you know. I don't cook, South the West. I don't cook. <laughs> so I wanted to just say a word about Israel at this time. Please. Israel is so important in the world. And, uh, exactly. and those people who want to know where, you know, how did it happen to me? I have to say, well, just, you know, I'm one of those people who looks at uh, the Bible and gets inspired, like many artists over the years, you know, uh, almost all the writers, the great writers are inspired by the Bible. When you look at this, the, uh, the words to Abraham, Preach, old man. which began Preach. all of this, mm. when he talks about the land, and he said, I, I want you to leave your father's house, the house, house of your birth, birthplace, and, yeah. and go where I will show you, and you will be a blessing uh, to all, you know, uh, this great nation that you will, Yes. You provide. Exactly. And that's what this nation is to me. And uh, I take, I, I say that I'm a, a Zionist. Obviously, anybody who believes that is a Zionist. And we have a president of the United States now exactly. who understands all of this and has been a tremendous this like, blessing. This is like 10 to, years ago when uh, Trump was in office. To Israel. And so I know that our nation is blessed because of this. As, as God said, you know, those who bless you, I will bless. So uh, we're receiving the blessings of your nation because of our presence. Amen. God, God bless you, John so Voight. May you live us. forever and ever. Everybody at home, please check out Friends of Chabad on TV. Thank you so much again. Bread with Have some fun. Cheese? And be inspired. Bread with cheese. That's a good idea. <laughs> but I like to be skinny. I like to be skeleton. <laughs> Just joking. To be honest, when I sit on my ass, it really hurts. Because <laughs> my bones go straight in through. Okay, <laughs> next video. Now, the ongoing Israel-Hamas war has prompted some of the prominent members of Hollywood to take a stand. In a recent event, Angelina Jolie's father, John Voight, has publicly slammed her, uh, his daughter for her comments on the war.
In a three minute long video that has gone viral on social media, John Wood publicly claimed that he was disappointed with his daughter, Angelina Jolie, for her anti Israel stance. That's the worst thing. Imagine that's the worst thing for, for a daughter to know that her father is disappointed in her. That's really sad. You know? She's a disappointment. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's also tomato sauce and spices, not just bread and cheese. Oh! Tomato sauce and spices. I have to go and buy tomato sauce. Oh, okay, good to know for next time. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. I never thought of it. You are genius, you know? You're, you're actually genius. With the American flag in so the back, he captioned the video, York. Truth and Lies. I'm very disappointed that my daughter, like so many, has no understanding of God's honor, God's truths. This is about destroying the history of God's land, the Holy Land. Exactly. The land of the Jews. The land of the Jews. This is justice for God's children of the Holy Land. Exactly. Israel, the Israeli army must protect thy soil, thy people. This is exactly. war. Exactly. It's not going to be what the left thinks. It can't be civil now. Israel was attacked by inhuman terror on innocent Barbarians, babies, mothers. freaks, and creeps. Last week, Jolie became one of the prominent figures to voice her concerns about the ongoing war, where she said, and I'm quoting here, what happened in Israel is an act of terror, but that cannot justify the Those innocent lives her. lost in bombing a civilian population in Gaza. Yes, it can justify that, okay? Because we have to get rid of the enemy, you know? And they were all collectively in on the attack on us on October 7th. This is justice taking form, and it's a war of attrition. It's a war of vengeance. Actually not, unfortunately. It's not a war of vengeance because if it were, there would be very little left of the Gazans. But, <clears throat> you know, like, these are monsters. They don't know how to love. They don't understand what love is. So, you know, those are her real lips, by the way. <laughs> those are her real lips. <laughs> Yeah, but they got it all wrong, you know, it's like everything is twisted, you know, like good is evil, evil is good. They don't get it. They don't know who's good and bad. Like the Gazans, if she would go there, they would chop her head off. They would rape her dead body. That's what they would do. This is the type of people that we're dealing with. Oh, oh, the poor Gazans. Give me a break. Cry me a river, bitch. You can buy basic pizza at the supermarket and with different vegetables. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy holy bread. And then I'm gonna buy cheese and I'm gonna get tomato sauce and I'm gonna make it every day in my oven. You're a genius. I don't do ham. <laughs> and I don't do salami and I don't do, and I do tuna, but I, ham is not kosher. Salami is too much hormones in it and it makes gives me terrible periods. I also have protein bar, right? But it gives me headaches because it's chocolate. I don't eat chocolate because it gives me migraine, instant migraine. Tuna pizza with red onions and black olives. Okay, thank you, Sargon of Akkad. You're a genius. You're brilliant. You know, I should write it down. Where's my pen? See? I never thought of pizza. It's good, it's, 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 it's healthy, and it's nutritional. Pizza. Pizza. Tomato sauce. Sauce, cheese, cheese, and what do you say? Tuna, vegetables, right? Tomato sauce, spices. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Sargon Vakad, Jorg. I really appreciate it because I, I don't know how to cook. So <laughs> I do cook sometimes, but it's just not enough. That is nowhere to go. No access to food or water, no possibility of evacuation, not even the basic human right to they cross a border everything. to seek refuge. She further stated that Gaza has been an open air prison <clears throat> for nearly two decades and is fast becoming a mass grave. By refusing to demand a human. Israel is an open air prison. Humanitarian ceasefire and blocking the. I'm sorry, Ms. Hany, I should have known you don't eat ham. It's okay. <laughs> it's just not kosher. <laughs> when Security Council from imposing right. one on both parties. World leaders are complicit in the crimes. So let her go and go. Let her go Beyond to Gaza. is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get. Let her go to Gaza and see how they treat her because she cares so much. You know, like go there, bitch. 
go there and see how they treat you, bitch. Right? She's such an, she's such an idiot, I tell ya. People are just such idiots. So okay, so this guy here, his name is Yishai Fleischer, and he is my he is my brother-in-law's first cousin. <laughs> here in Hebron, it's great to be with you. T tell me why you're here. You, you, because I heard of your dynamic personality. I wanted to meet you in person. <laughs> that's why you came. <laughs> that's ex exactly. No, it. we're here for the forefathers and mothers. No, that, that's what we are. Yeah. Tell well, me about that. Why are well, you here today? Well, what we, we're doing here is we're part He's of a little a, bit of an a, asshole. A little, um, show on JLTV and on as I've been told as I've been told he's a bit of an asshole you know maybe he grew up by now but he he could be mean that is about the land of Israel and we're calling it the land of Israel God's story mm. and it is God's story so what we want to do is we want to trace the beginnings of it and come here and show people the places I used to go to the Ma'ar Samach Pela, which is where they're standing the the graves of the forefathers of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. I used to go there and I used to pray there and it's just so peaceful. You go in there and it's just so quiet and peaceful and you hear the chandeliers. You know, it's just really calm, peaceful place to be. I should go there again. <laughs> Where these events happen and uh, get an insight into the personalities He's of the old. patriarchs and all of the, uh, the, the chosen people that have brought us to this time, you know? John, John you're a Hollywood actor. You know, not everybody, ah. not everybody you in Hollywood knew, likes you know that. that. Yeah, not, every, not everybody <laughs> likes what you're doing here. Tell me, like, why, why would you... Well, wait a minute, young How, age, mean, why would they have anything against me being here? Well, there's, pe there's people who've got issues with Israel. Andy Semitist. So, John Boyd, right, he's getting old. He looks a little bit like, he has the features, like, a bit Russian. I wouldn't be surprised if he had, like, Russian ancestry. He looks like my great uncle before he passed away, right? And I wonder if I can show you, right? I wonder if I could show you my great uncle. Do you know what I'm saying? If I could find you a picture of my great uncle before he passed away at my sister's wedding. Right? There. Hold on. Documents, pictures, camera roll. I want to see if I could find it so you can see how he looks like my uncle. You know? Here he is. Okay, so this is my great uncle. I don't know if you can see. This is my great uncle before he passed away at my sister's wedding. His name was Uncle Danny. And his real name was Gedalia. And he reminds me of John Voigt. You know, he has, he's very Russian, Russian features. This is my father. This is my father, and this is my uncle. Two beloved people that I love very much. He passed away since, Uncle Danny, and he reminds me of John Voigt a little bit. There's a problem from the beginning. Well, there's, pe there's people who've got issues with this. Anti Semitism is a problem from the beginning. And once we conquer it, like people, I'll tell you something. I was in Russia. And it was right after a, a certain kind of openness. It was in 1991. And uh, they asked me, they said, what's, uh, what's the answer to world peace? <laughs> right. <laughs> because they had a, a burst of uh, freedom. They could ask any question they want to right, ask. Right? Right. And they asked me that question, an actor from Hollywood. Right. right. And I said, uh, I said, when all the nations come to appreciate the Jews, There'll be peace on earth. Hmm. And I thought about it since then, and I said, that's exactly the right answer. Perfect answer. <laughs> you know? And I think that the story that we're, the story we're telling uh, gives us that insight. He's a prophet. You hear that? He just had a revelation from God to say such a thing. And then he had to think about it after, like, what did I just say? That if we just understand, God's trying to reach human, he has human higher beings consciousness. and bring them to the glory that He wants for them, to share His glory with them, right? And He and, and he, every time He made an experiment, they failed. So He found this fellow Abraham, and He put His faith in Abraham, tested him out, and uh, His him progeny out. was going to be His hope. So Abraham he's found him. On Abraham found him. Abraham found God. Right.
they found each other. But really, Abraham found God. The people, the chosen people, to bring us all, all the nations, be a blessing to all nations, is what God told Abraham. Amen. To bring us to that time when we can all come and enjoy each other and, 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 uh, and find ourselves in joy and peace and love. And, uh, and, and, out, the, and the Jewish light, people have out, had their ups and downs, but they've done it. Really. When you come to Israel, you see, yes, these extraordinary things that are happening. <laughs> this is, these people have, have come back to this land as they were, as it was told they would do. And, uh, and there they answered. So we have to be, because this energy I of God, and, and the more I meet the people who are connected to this energy, they're <clears throat> performing all these wonderful things Great, for us thank all. you. And there, Hope there are saints well too. in every religion, and those are the guides for all of us, you know. Uh, and uh, we're coming to a time when we're coming together. I be really believe we're coming to that How time. How long ago is this Even video done? Even though we've been through some really rough times very recently, mm -hmm. I think... Uh, there's this must a, have been recent. peace in sight. Something marvelous is happening. So with the Abraham Accords, that was a big jump, and no one saw that coming. And I think we're on our way, see? Amen. So anyway, that's I mean, what I mean. John Voigt at the Tomb of the Patriarchs and Matriarchs. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. God bless you from here. What a great man. What a great man. One second. Let me go see how long ago that video was. Ufa rasta yama va yama, yama va yama. Right? Spread out, spread light. It's two years ago. Yeah, that was two years ago, before October 7. Right, and he was already loving us. He was loving on us. Continuing on to the next video. Spread out, spread light, spread love all around the world. And he looks like my great uncle. And my father. And my great uncle. Who passed away, sadly. My great uncle passed. May he rest in peace. Okay, now we're going to go down to the next video. Next video. I'm very disappointed that my daughter, like so many, <laughs> He's disappointed has no in understanding of God's honor, God's truths. This is about destroying the history of God's land, the Holy Land. Exactly. The land of the Jews. The land of the this Jews. Is justice for God's children of justice the Holy Land. Justice for us. Israel, yeah. the Israeli army must protect thy soil, thy people. This is war. War. It's not going to be what the left thinks. It can't be civil now. Israel was attacked by inhuman terror on innocent babies, mothers, fathers, grandparents. And you survivors. fools calling Israel the you problem. Fools you should look Israel. at yourselves and ask, who am I? What, what am I? He looks like my and great uncle. God, I... He looks like my great uncle, you guys. Where's my uncle? Where am I? Down. Let's find my uncle. Show you a picture of my uncle. Hold on. Where's that picture? Hmm. To find it again. <laughs> I have to go find it again. I have to find it on my computer. Okay. Here, let's go find it. Let's go find it. Where's my uncle? My great uncle. My great great. Uh, I have to go find it. <laughs> Right? Here he is. See? He looks just like my uncle, doesn't he? Doesn't he look just like my uncle? Look how they look the same. Learning the truth? Or am I being lied to and following everyone else? Because my friends, the ones and babies, mothers, fathers, grandparents, Wait, not and you this. fools calling Israel the problem, you should look at yourselves and ask, who am I? What, what am I? And ask God, am I learning the truths or am I being lied to and following everyone else? Because my friends, the ones who understand truth see the lie. They see Israel has been attacked and these animals want to wipe out Jews, Christians, 
They see that the Palestinians have not been neglected to finance. They've been given huge infusions of money that exactly. they didn't share with the people. They made weapons exactly. instead for their, their rage. The people of Israel care for people. They love, they cherish, something these animals don't understand. Exactly. I wouldn't call them animals. They're subhuman trash. That's what they are. They're demonic entities. Let's go see the next video of John Boyd. And Tell us about... You understand what is going on here. You understand what's going on here. This is a prophecy of Jeremiah. Years before. 2,000 years ago, he prophesied that the this area of the world would produce wine. Wow. And we did from this... This <laughs> age. <Hey, laughs> <laughs> He's very emotional. He's a very deeply religious man, you know? He's a very special man. God bless him. Should we watch it again? Do you want to see him get moved to tears? And tell us about me cry. It. You understand what is going He's on here. He's making me cry. This is a prophecy of Jeremiah. Years He's so deeply before. religious in his... 2,000 years ago. Wow. He prophesied that the this area of the world would produce... Where I lived, Judea and Samaria. Oh, such a nice grandpa, <laughs> grandpa Paul. Who wants to see more? Who wants to see more? He's <laughs> just a baby. Who wants to see more of that? Okay, one second. I have to just check something. What is this? Delete this. I have to delete this out of my thing. And do you want to see Farazda again? Do you want to see Farazda? Right? Okay. Now, continuing on. Shall we continue on? So that was Angelina Jolie's father, who is... She's only famous because of him. You want to see more? Okay. Let's go. Go. Uforatsta, yama vakid masivoyna, avavava nego foratsta, yama vakid masivoyna panegba. Okay, let's see what else. Highest price ever for killing one person. Houthi celebrates strike. As Yemenis suffer. Following Israel's strike on Hodeida, Yemen and its people face a blow of the attack, but may face greater complications due to Houthi rule. It's just unbelievable. These Muslims, they just can't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. They just don't get it. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, now all we have to do is go to different news station. Spread out, spread light, spread love all around the world. Spread out, spread light, spread love all around the world. Spread light, spread love, spread. Ufa, that's the yama, 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 yama. Netanyahu to Congress, Gaza war clash between barbarism and civilization. Possible human remains in cars burned on October 7th. Ooh. Hostage families marched in Tel Aviv as Prime Minister speaks. John Voigt can't stop criticizing his daughter. <laughs> because he's, she's such a disappointment. You know, like, imagine she goes against every belief that you have. You know, like, he recognized good and he recognized evil. She embraces evil. She embraces Hamas, who's like, they kill their own people. It's like, it's insane. Animals suffer stress during war, study says. Oh, okay, let's go see that. Do they really? Animals suffer stress, anxiety during war, study shows. Tel Aviv University researchers present byproduct data observed while testing geckos before and after October 7, showing the sounds of explosions negatively, negatively impact animals. So, I see geckos all the time and lizards outside my house, right? Inside my building. 
A new study by Tel Aviv University and the Steinhardt Museum of Natural History has shown that the war in Gaza is severely impacting wildlife. The study, which focused on geckos, found that the sound of explosions from rocket fire causes them stress and anxiety, sharply increasing their meta metabolic, metabolic rate and energy costs that may endanger their lives. The researchers estimate that these stress and anxiety symptoms likely affect many other animals, especially those living in the combat zones in Israel's north and south. Little geckos, so cute. Aren't they just adorbs, you guys? Aren't they just adorbs? Let's get a yeah. Everybody, let's get a yeah. <laughs> let's get a let's get a yes. Can we get a yes? Can we get a Y? Can we get an E? Can we get an S? Yes. The study was led by a team of researchers from the University School of Zoology. Zoology, and the museum and published in the journal Ecology. It came about by chance, since the researchers already were examining the acclimatization time of wild geckos to captivity to use them in controlled experiments at the university. The geckos were placed in a metabolic chamber to observe how their bodies responded. Then the war broke out. During Operation Guardian of the Walls in 2021, we had a snake that was a part of a larger study, and it was inside the metabolic chamber when a missile was intercepted near the university. The snake reacted like the geckos did during the war. Coincidentally, the geckos were in the metabolic chamber when missiles were fired at Tel Aviv. And the researchers saw this as a golden opportunity for their study. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? We're being shot at, and they're busy doing science. Uh experimentation like this trial and error yes they're gonna lock that yes they're cute right cutesy cutesy <laughs> okay so the terrible thing about war is of course the loss of human lives soldiers and civilians but, um, but unfortunately animals are also severely infected both directly and indirectly exactly like when when there was a big boom and bang on october 7 and on what was it? It was uh, when they sh they threw the, the the Iranians threw the missiles into here in Israel, and I heard the booms and the bangs. They were shooting it down, and a huge missile landed in 15 minutes from me in the Dead Sea, and the whole ground shook. My dog jumped. Right, it was 1:43 in the morning, and my dog jumped. 1.43 a.m. And my dog jumped from the impact. Frightened. Was it... The, when did you jump? Was it that or October 7? I'm not sure. Right? So. <laughs> Unfortunately, animals are also severely affected, both directly and indirectly, in ways that may endanger their lives. A few weeks before October 7, we started a routine study examining the energy consumption rate of small ground geckos of the steno... Dactylus, Stenodactylus species. We, of course, didn't foresee the outbreak of war, but unintentionally managed to document the energy consumption of five geckos during the missile barrage fire, fired at Tel Aviv in this, the first month of the war, he added. Here's interceptions above Tel Aviv, you know, with the, the Iron Dome, right? Once the explosions began, the geckos' metabolic rate doubled when compared to their resting state. They breathed faster and showed clear signs of distress. The experiment continued for up to four hours after the barrages, and the geckos hadn't calmed down or returned to resting metabolic levels. Moreover, even after a month of fighting, the geckos didn't get used to the sound of explosions, and their response remained unchanged. Poor geckos. The study was conducted by doctoral student Shahar Dubiner, Professor Shai Mary, and Professor Aaron Levin in collaboration with Dr. Reut Vardi from the University of Oxford. We know the consequences of stress on animals and humans, Mary said. Stress directly causes increased resource consumption. For example, the available sugar and fat reserves, which an animal needs daily to avoid starvation and to reproduce properly. We know stress hormones negatively impact reproduction. The animals has to compensate for the situation it's in, he added. This is once the explosions began. The gecko's metabolic rate doubled when compared to their resting state. Oh, poor little gecko. Levin added, stress isn't good, neither for humans nor animals. To compensate for the increase in oxygen consumption and depletion of energy reserves, animals need to eat more, even if they manage to find food. They expose themselves to predators and lose opportunities to reproduce in the process. Right. 
Well, I'm not reproducing, so why should they? I'm just joking. Relax, don't come for me. God, I was just joking. <laughs> Calm down, freaks. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down, everyone. <laughs> in a prolonged war like the current situation in Gaza, southern Israel and the northern border, the energy costs may be high and significantly impact the energy reserves and activity times of reptiles and other animals. This would worsen their conser conservation status, especially for species already at risk. The researchers wrote in their article conclusion, We mourn the pain and loss caused to people by armed conflicts here and everywhere, and we hope the results of our study will serve as a reminder that war can cause devastating effects far beyond what is apparent to us. <sighs> yeah, you know? Exactly. <laughs> Poor geckos. Okay, so we saw this. I want to see them get bombed, right? So here they get bombed, right? This really Air Force. We we saw this yesterday. I think I showed you guys about the the way Israel lured the terrorists out of their hole and then they bombed them. <laughs> Israeli forces killed local Hamas and Fatah terror commanders, along with five others, including women disguised as paramedic and armed with rifle. Palestinian Red Crescent says women did not represent emergency responders. So here is the. <laughs> They come out and then they get bombed. <laughs> They're so stupid to come out. Oh. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad. Not. They're such extreme morons. It's just unbelievable. So the idea of drone targets them. So IDF killed Ashraf, <laughs> Nafa, Muhammad, Abu Abdu, they all have the same names, so whatever. Commanders of Hamas and Fatah, military wings and telecom, respectively, in a targeted strike in the West Bank refugee camp on Tuesday. At least five others were killed in the operation, including a woman disguised as a paramedic. <laughs> this is them. You want to see them? Gun, gun women disguised as paramedic eliminated. This is how they were. <laughs> These morons. They're such fantastic morons, like what his name says. They come out. How did they do it? How did they? That woman. They're gonna get bombed now. Morons. They're such fantastic morons. It's just lovely. This is like them before they got bombed. You see them getting bombed? Isn't it delicious? Look at them getting bombed. This is them walking around. Like idiots, you know? What do they think? Are they stupid? Yeah, they're stupid. Look at them. That's them. Eliminated. Uh, so how did they get them out? I didn't understand. They say Allah Akbar. It means God, Allah... Who is, I think, he is Akbar, I guess in Islam it's great. And it's usually a war cry where they charge into war screaming that, you know. Like this is how sick they are. IDF killed these people in a strike. At least five others were killed in the operation, including a woman disguised as a paramedic with an armed rifle. The Palestinian Red, they, they, they condemn them. In the video clip, the two commanders are seen cheering and waving their weapons shortly before they were killed in a drone strike. <laughs> It's just delicious. Since October 7, the IDF has intensified operations in West Bank refugee camps, which have been hubs for terrorist activity. IDF forces decep use deception to lure their targets into the open before attacking them from the air. How do they do that? The IDF had conducted approximately 50 airstrikes in the West Bank camps in recent months, targeting explosive production sites and IEDs. It's crazy how, like, the Muslims in, in the West Bank near me are making explosions. Like, devices while we can't make our own weapons in Israel it's, it's crazy we have to get our weapons from America it doesn't make sense so how do they get them out they, they, they learned them out I don't know how they learned them out and they, they killed them <laughs> super work this is sup super work this is Mitsuyan do you know what Mitsuyan is it's it's super it's 
excellence. Literally excellent. Ufaratsta Yama Vakid Masifoina Vada Pane Papara Sta Yama Vakid Masifoina Banegba. Okay. What's this? speech tonight to both houses of Congress. Some 200 left-wing Jewish protesters were arrested while staging a sit-in on Capitol Hill. The group Jewish Voice for Peace organized a protest demanding... Put them in Gaza, you know, put them in Gaza, those freaks. A hall to Fringe Jews. To Israel. In a separate protest, dozens of relatives of Israeli <laughs> hostages demonstrated near the Capitol building. It what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> Okay, uh, many Israelis do not want to be here on October 7. What? Your silence on Russia's hospital bombing in Ukraine on heels of outrage over Gaza op. Oh, so Russia basically bombed a hospital in Ukraine, and nobody cares. Nobody cares? But, oh, when Jews are, like, accused of doing it when they didn't even do it, we, they go crazy on us. Fuck those bitches. Fringe freaks, <laughs> that's what they are. <laughs> Despite the devastating nature of the hospital attack, the international public reaction was relatively muted. Social media campaigns against Russian aggression in Ukraine, such as Stand with Ukraine and Stop Russian Aggression, have seen widespread engagement, but no specific campaign was created to address the attack on the Children's Hospital. They don't care. This muted response stands in stark contrast to online activism regarding the Israeli Hamas war. Because when the Jews involved, you know, suddenly they go crazy. Right? Yeah. Hypocrites, that's what they are. Hypocrites, they don't really care. You know, it's all about getting relevance because, you know, the Jews are important, so, oh yeah, whatever. Okay, anyway. How come I can't find, like, things to look at, you know? Like... <gasps> Daily Caller, Crazy Kamala. <laughs> crazy Kamala, she's a freak. This lady's a freak, you know? She's really a freak. Scoped out. Christopher Way reveals new details about gun Trump shooter used in assassination attempt. Fox News, Lawrence Jones defends fellow encore against accusations. She's an idiot. Kamala Harris savaged by MSNBC's Wisconsin Women Voters Focus Group. Oh, let's see that. We oh, gotta see that. Hmm. No video? I'm disappointed. <sighs> we do not have room. Sanctuary state to offer plane tickets for migrants to leave. Rookie swing state candidate gives Republicans clear cut plan to end Kamala's momentum. World's most horrifying monster has iron coated teeth. Iron coated teeth, do you hear this? <laughs> That's a monster, my friends. Okay. Man accused of stabbing iconic author linked to Islamic terrorist organization. Yeah, of course. David Axelrod says Kamala Harris smart not to campaign on becoming first black woman president. Exactly. Okay. Let's see. <gasps> okay, let's go see camera.org. CNN continues to advocate for U.S. sanctions on Israel. CNN hides a chief terrorist. Isn't that, isn't that something? CNN hides a chief terrorist? Far too many of the network's reporters are more interested in reporting a narrative of the conflict rather than reality. Right, Times of Israel corrects Abdallah Ajmal, who held Israeli hostages with Palestine Chronicle correspondent. <laughs> Wow. 
Wow, okay, so Christian Amanpour wants to know what does Israel fear from Palestine? Christian Amanpour, really? Come here and we'll send you to Gaza to speak to the Gazans. And you can speak to them. The, we will stand back. We will let you go there alone and you can have conversation. Let us know when you get back, if you get back, what they said. How about that? How about that? This lady, she wants to know why we have to fear for, from the Gazans, right? She wants to know why we ha we're afraid of the Gazans, right? The Palestinians. Okay, so, okay, go on. Here, Christiane Amanpour. Who's this lady? Let's find out who she is. Copy. Let's go. Go there. We'll, we'll give you a free ticket to Gaza. You know, we'll, you know, the Israeli soldiers will drop you in there. She, oh, she's a CNN reporter, whatever. Okay, lady, we'll send you to Gaza just the way you look. Send you into Gaza. The Israeli soldiers will put you there in the, in the refugee camp so you can talk to them. And let us know how what they said when you get back, if you get back, okay? Let us know how, how it went, if you get back, if, if you get back. She's such an idiot. It's, people are stupid, you know? So stupid. It's like, like these people, they, uh, a lot of journalists, they go to these, like, they go to these godforsaken countries and then they get their head chopped off by these godforsaken people, right? It's like, why are you going there, idiot? LA Times falsely blames home sales on Palestinian land in Palestinian land for tax on LA Jews. What? Okay, New York Times hires another anti Israel extremist to cover Israel. It's unbelievable. It's all about propaganda, you know? This is great news. This is great news channel, camera.org. Right? Okay. <gasps> see what else there is? Delete. The English of the Jews. It's a book, right? I downloaded a bunch of books. Freedom News. Today's News. Right? This is the baby that's kidnapped. Kibbutz near Oz announced the body of a buck abducting Mia Gorin has been returned. She's dead. They, she got kidnapped on October 7 into Gaza. They killed her. Um, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. Let's see what else there is. Today's news. We did that. Palestinian Media Watch. Israel Today. Netanyahu make to make history with fourth address to Congress. Very nice. Let's see Walla news. Our enemies are your enemies. The body of the kidnapped Mia Gorin. Okay, the Jewish heart is filled with pride. Israel scored in the Olympic tournament after 48 years. Okay, kidnappers were killed. Big deal. Judy near Moses is furious with Sarah. Okay, Palestinian five bears tried to attack the Israeli crowd. Where? In Paris, right? <laughs> Avoid unnecessary chemotherapy. Annoy the ex, Ella, whatever. Okay, a bunch of nonsense. Then we can go see this. I'm really tired. Economic Times. Hello? You? <laughs> it's Economic Times. Okay, let's go to. Children's Library. Banned videos. Let's go see damn banned videos. <laughs> Okay, this is good. This does is good. Does is good. Alright. Hmm. Okay, it's good to review all of them. <laughs> and then, 
We can. You know, like. Oh. I'm exhausted, really. Really exhausted, right? Tom, top Trump justice officials intervened to cut sentence. For who? Roger Stone? Be Roger Stone? What happened? I'm completely. Oh God. Okay. That's that, you guys. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm exhausted. I'm like really tired. I was up early, you know, so it's like. <sighs> pizza. <laughs> Falling asleep. Pizza is what I'm thinking. Pizza. Yeah, I have to go tomorrow shopping and get more food. Let's say it's today Wednesday or Tuesday. Wednesday. Damn. The week's going back by really quick. Anyway, I'm gonna go tomorrow. I'm gonna go shopping. I'm gonna get pizza. I'm gonna get food for weekend. Then, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Anyway, thanks for being here and have a great day. Bye.